All right, Shalom. Before I start, we're going to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakhak Kurash, Devonis, to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all like Akim, Wa learning, teaching, and truth and sincerity. And in the video for the Spirit, your brother Malat from GMS Detroit. All right, for this one, uh, dealing with that retarded argument, you know, that uh, Negroes, so called African Americans, are indigenous to America and that we never came over on slave ships slave ships didn't exist uh as far as i know you know somebody correct me if i'm wrong you know i know other people probably said it but that main the main son of a bitch who was pushing that was that dane calloway fucking cocksucker straight up all right anybody who's teaching that because you got certain israelites you know you'll be out and about uh you, you have black people in the world that'll whisper that shit and then certain Israelites, you know, you get be around some niggas, they get to talking to you. Well, yeah, nigga, you know, we we do we were original Americans. We we indigenous anyway. No, you stupid bitch. Northern Kingdom came over here first. Uh, then Southern Kingdom was taken over here captive. That is how, you know, you get the fulfillment of Jeremiah uh, 50 and 33, right? Judah and Israel were oppressed together. So-called Negroes, all right. Uh, uh, African Americans, Haitians, uh, uh, Jamaicans, right? All the different Isles, St. Lucia, all them. We are not indigenous to the Americas. We were brought over here on slave ships from Africa and from Europe. That is how we got over here. And just because we don't have a whole bunch of slave ships in museums doesn't mean that they never existed. Most of the slave ships were destroyed and repurposed. Esau was getting rid of that history, right? And he said, you know, he outlawed it. You know, you get when you outlaw something, you get rid of it. You don't, you know. It's as simple as that. I got a couple clips I'm gonna play to address it. Then I got an article, and of course we're gonna get some scripture. So let's start with this one, because you know it pissed me off. You know, this woman she got to asking about what happened to some of the slave ships, and I went and looked it up to confirm what she was talking about was true. You know, one of the last ones, uh, Clodita. Mispronouncing it, but you you come to the comments and what do you see? Some ignorant niggas repeating that statement. All right, black folks was already in America. The Europeans came on a ship to America. That's why we don't have any slaves. Shut that stupid shit up. You niggas don't know what the niggas be hearing shit on the internet. And don't double check nothing. Don't know what the fuck you be talking about. And us, the prophets, we can't be on that banned y'all if you when you come across these videos and these clips on in, on online you have to do like the apostle said you have to qualify that you can't just be believing some shit because somebody put it in a nice reel or came and hold up this this fucking scumbag dane calloway hey i, I share uh, the elder apostle rakai hates this motherfucker too i hate this motherfucker just as well teaching that this nigga uh, un uh, was it uh, untold truth about African Americans. You are not from Africa. Uh, why black Americans are a threat to American society? Are African Americans the American Indians? No. You have Northern Kingdom and Southern Kingdom. All right. Gad, Reuben, those are the main two so-called Native American tribes. But then you have the rest of Northern Kingdom. Uh, 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 Simeon, Issachar, Zebulon. Right. Uh, Asher, Manasseh, Naphtali. Stop it. That's that. That's that BS. This is not a a, a black, a Negro focused thing. Our people have been scattered everywhere. All right. And in dealing with America, we are not indigenous to this place. Northern Kingdom came first. So let me get that actually, and then I'll play that video. Our Northern Kingdom brothers and sisters came here first. Although, you know, uh, uh, ships would come here to get goods under, by way of King Solomon, the first groups of people who came and settled and, you know, uh, lived here in mass that we have on record is Northern Kingdom. And that's what it is. That explains why they were here when Esau got the fuck over here already. Negroes are not indigenous to America. I can't shout the shit enough. Second Edges 16. I'm going to start at, uh, I'm sorry, not 16, I'm sorry. Um, 13, pissed me off. Almost fucked up the chapter. Second edges 
13 and 39. And whereas thou sawest that he gathered another peaceful multitude unto him, those are the ten tribes which were carried away prisoners out of their own land in, in the time of Osea the king, whom Salmanasser the king of Assyria led away captive. And he carried them over the waters, and so they came into another land. So the northern kingdom was taken out of their land originally, right, and taken hostages into Assyria under the Assyrian captivity. But then what? But they took this counsel among themselves that they should leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into another country where never mankind dwelt. Right, so they decided to get the, to separate Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, set it up to where they were able to leave from under their captors to another land. They, le they left the so-called Middle East. They, did, they didn't go settle in Africa. They didn't go settle in Antarctica. They didn't go settle in Australia. They came over here to the Americas. That they might keep... That they might there keep their statutes, which they never kept in their own land. And they entered into Euphrates by the narrow places of the river. For the Most High showed signs for them and held still the flood till they were passed over. For through that country there was a great... It's like it for... Through that country there was a great way to go, namely a year and a half, and the same region is called Arsareth. Then dwelt they there until the latter time, and now when they shall begin to come. Right. That year and a half trip brings them to the Americas. It don't take a year and a half to go from Assyria to any part of Africa. It don't take a year and a half to even walk it, man. You can figure you can get, you can ride you a goddamn donkey and get there within, you know different parts within you know weeks and months not a whole year and a half right where did they hop in ships and sail to to the americas undisputed so coming back to the slave ships what happened to the slave ships where are all the slave ships i mean they have every other type of ship in a museum so why don't we have any museums with slave ships in them yeah i remember when people were making this argument at the beginning of the pandemic now i didn't have a following back then so i didn't want to bring it up and after the way y'all decided to tussle with me over Dr. CB, I just figured we wait till the end of Black History Month for this. But it's March 1st and I chose violence. So, with love and light, here's the answer. And we're going to combine some history, some context, and some common sense. So, here we go. Sure. Common sense being the key one. For somebody who believes that we're indigenous to Americas, you don't have common sense. Because really, it don't matter how many proofs you show them at that point, they're just a fucking clown. And ultimately, hey, if, this is just a stumbling block for people. So it is what it is. The answer is that slave ships weren't built to last 500 years, nor were they preserved once they were retired. Because by that time, the folks who were importing slaves found something else to import. So there are people who are using this as evidence that the transatlantic slave trade didn't happen. And that's just not true. The Middle Passage is very well documented. And if we're thinking in history in terms of the U.S., the last known slave ship to import Africans to America for the purpose of chattel slavery docked in 1860, and it was called the Clotilda. Yep, Clotilda. I'm sorry, not Clotilda. But we'll look that one up here in a second. Clotilda. Now we know that emancipation happened within 10 years of the Clotilda docking, but there's something that happened in 1808, about 60 years prior, that a lot of people don't know about. And that's called the Act Prohibiting the Importation of Slaves. Now that act was passed in 1808. And what happened essentially was at the Constitutional Convention, the Founding Fathers argued about slavery the way that they've been arguing about slavery <laughs> since the American Revolution. And the compromise they came to was that the North was like, okay, South, y'all can keep your slaves that you already have, but you can't import any new ones. But Cheyenne, you just said the Clotilda docked in 1860. Y'all, they were sneaking us in. Now we know if there's one thing history's taught us is that white folks don't like the government messing with their money. And there were whole companies who did nothing but import human chattel. So you think they just stopped overnight? No, 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 no. They continued. They continued to import human chattel and use the guise of those other goods that they were shipping um, as cover. And it's very well documented. I implore you to go look it up. But essentially what would happen was if those ships were found off the coast of the USA and they had slaves on them, what they would do was set the ship on fire and let it burn. Or they'd chain up all the Africans and literally push them off the side so they drown by the time they got to shore and they just figured screw it we'll just take the loss and if you look at records from that time you'll see that a lot of them are incomplete or written in code and if that sounds absolutely horrific it's because it was if you get a chance i recommend reading this book 
It's Barracoon by Zora Neale Hurston. The foreword is by Alex Walker. It's a great book. Um, but it tells of the story of the last black cargo um, in his own words, in Cujo's own words. But yeah, those ships simply weren't saved because they weren't deemed as important enough to save. And the companies and agencies that use them just use them for other stuff or dock them and let them rot away. If you want more information, the Smithsonian yeah, conducting a project. It's called the Slave Rex Project, where they go try and look for those boats. But, yeah. So it's as simple as that. Esau just destroyed the evidence, per usual. Anything that makes him look bad. All right. Uh, so you look through the comments and what do you see? Niggas sitting here, I'm not even about to read all that, man. Um, what does my... You ever sailed the Atlantic Ocean? If you did, you know it was truly impossible back then to sail across the Atlantic Ocean with a... Well, then how did fucking Columbus get over here, you fucking cocksucker? Niggas just be talking, man. Shut up! Motherfuckers on the internet don't know what the fuck they talking about. We didn't spawn out the grass in this bitch. We was brought over here. Alright? So what we gonna do... This time, this shit pisses me off. Because if this is the case, what are we mad about? If we're... If we weren't taken captive and brought over here and we didn't, we don't got nothing to be mad about. We should just be mad at ourselves for being weak ass black people and not being able to live up to the standards of the white man. We don't got nothing to be mad about. He never oppresses. He's not our oppressor then, right? So stop, stop this. You throw off the whole plot when you're believing in some uh, silly ideology like that. And really, you, you, you know, you get to take the, the blame off of Esau. So you, you doing two wrongs. Stop it. So right here, all you gotta do is type in what happened to the slave ships. This is after the Atlantic slave trade was outlawed, the slave ships were repurposed for piracy or captured and used by navies. So plain and simple, most of those ships were repurposed. Some of them was just straight up chopped up for wood or turned into other kinds of vessels. It's not that hard. The same way that all the old if that if that's the case, y'all, right? You wanna know you wanna use use some common sense logic, like the girl said. Think about all the original first cars that it were coming into existence, 1800s, early 1900s, with no roof, you know, buggy style, big ass wheels. Oh, those cars never existed. You don't see none now. No, bitch. They got deconstructed and repurposed. They were taking the places like in today's time. What do they call them? Scrap yards. What do they do with all the old cars, y'all? Take them to scrap yards, repurpose the metal into other cars or into other things in general, period. It's, it's that simple. They did the same thing with these boats and they had an extra incentive to do it with these boats because, you know, the practice of picking up niggas had recently become outlawed and for the fact that Esau Edom loves to hide his evil deeds of history, his lineage of evil. So two things put together, all right? Um, it says repurpose for piracy. Uh, slave ships are often repurposed for piracy because of their speed, right? So them boys was quick. That one day, how you how you take a hundred ship, bitch? They said them things, them slave ships was built for speed. They was getting over here quick. The fuck is you talking about? <laughs> um, captured and used by navies. After capture, slave ships were often used by navies. For example, the USS Nightingale and HMS Black Joke were both former slave ships. Wow. How about that? For the U.S. The United States ships was originally slave ships. How about that, y'all? It says the Clotilda, the last known slave ship, the last known documented, right? And, you know, of course they were smuggling more. It says a uh, known slave ship to transport enslaved Africans uh, to the United States was the Clotilda, which was scalded and burned in 1860 to hide the crime. The ship was rediscovered in 2019 by author Ben Rains and, his, and is now a part of the National Register of Historic Places. So that's the real short answer. Many of them were burned, destroyed, repurposed, or hid to hide the crime. Plain and simple, y'all. Plain and simple. They were subject to capture by U.S. Navy or Royal uh, Navy. So either, you know, American Navy or British Navy, man. Come on, man, y'all. This is how we got here, man. Don't let nobody, don't let nobody fucking deceive you. Cunningly devised fables. That's all that that is. 
there's man there's certain things y'all it's it's the it is the foundation of our belief and if you let somebody uproot you up out of that you're already through how did we come over here what was the prophecy what did how did the prophecy say we was gonna come over here do you believe in these scriptures or are you gonna let some fuck some some clown bug you out I'm doing Tyler with him. And all the nigga doing is selling uh the nigga you come back to the nigga channel, he just selling you shit, man. Books, Mother Rosa, reverse, fixing America's broken He's just selling he's just selling you crap. Right here. So amazing. Dane Calloway, digital download. You gonna let a nigga bug you out over 199? A nigga with that native get up on, man. Stop playing. Alright, so lucky, y'all. Um yeah, man, this dude, this dude here, he got a lot of blood on his hands. Uh, ultimately, it's a stumble block, but this guy has a lot of blood on his hands. Uh, this Dan Calloway guy, he's one of the, he, he, he's not the only guy who was teaching it, but he was one of the main big ones. I remember them, you know, them years ago when he hit that, started saying that, you know, the niggas are running up, running up. Yeah, nigga, you know, nigga, you, you ain't even, you niggas ain't even take no notes on it. You just was trying to regurgitate what he was saying, but that's common of niggas, you know. So De Deuteronomy twenty-eight and sixty-eight. And Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai shall bring thee into Egypt again, all right, into captivity, into bondage, again by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Um, thou shalt see it no more again, and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. Uh, Aslaki, uh, bring thee to Egypt again with ships, key point, ships, boats. Uh, and there you should be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. Meaning, when you look that word up in the Hebrew, no man shall redeem you. Going back to the custom, to the law, if you have a brother who is a, you know, a servant, you could petition to get them up out of that captivity with money, all right? You could buy them up out of that. That's not saying that we were going to show up as slaves and no one was going to buy us. That's, uh, you know, something those anti-Christians like to say and it's completely bugged out. Uh, we were brought into captivity again with boats and we would not be saved out of that captivity by our brothers. Okay, and the, the ones who were brought over here in particular by boats was Southern Kingdom, the so-called Negroes. And not, not only were we taken from Africa, but we were taken, oh my God, we were taken from certain parts of uh, Europe as well two parts in particular okay because you, you can't remember when you switch all that up you're switching up a lot of history negroes ruled in europe for a reason right they dethroned us and pulled us out of europe you can't forget about that you had the fall of the moorish empire which they were you know muslim israel uh they were so-called black men right muslim israelites but nevertheless they were still israelites so i got another clip for that all right, hey, in Salakia, uh, I got this dog in the car next to me. This boy sweating his ass off. So Salakia, y'all can probably hear him panting. <laughs> of us were not brought from West Africa to here. So he, not all, not all of the slaves were brought from Africa. You had some come from parts of Europe for a reason. Or even the Caribbeans. The first group of us were brought from Spain. And that is of a truth, something we have learned from our apostles over this all over over these years. Spain and Portugal. Come on. This is this is the Hebrew 101, Hebrew ABCs, one, two, three. We have gone into Spain as Moors in 711. We have dominated, conquered the Iberian Peninsula, which would mean at that time, what is today Spain, Portugal, and Southern France. From 14, from 711 till 1485, we were dominant there and ruled, and then we lost power. Bartolomeo de las Dis uh, Casca, who had come over here subsequent to uh, uh, his voyage, uh, looking for gold wrote the Pope in Rome to send the infidels, now we have come infidels, to the islands to work the gold. And thus, Pope Martin V started the slave trade to the West. Right, so some of the 
first slaves were from Spain and Portugal. That's all I was grabbing at. I'm pretty sure he's about to start going into all kinds of other crazy shit. Because you know them African niggas. But the, for that part right there, it was true. And that is what it is. Because if, 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 it, if we were indigenous to the Americas, then think about it, y'all. The Dark Ages, niggas never ruled over. Nigg niggas never, the Moorish Empire wouldn't have happened. Do you, do you understand the implications of saying that? That we're indigenous to the Americas? How much history you tear up? If that's the case, then we're not the Israelites. At what point did we get torn? At what point did we get pushed out of Jerusalem? The siege, uh, 70 AD, y'all. You got, you got to stop all that. Don't you, don't you be repeating shit off the internet like the apostles say. Man, you study. Look up what they will look up what is being said. What was said about the church of Berea? Let me get that. They went and searched things out. Right here, Acts 17 and 10. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, who, coming thither, went into the synagogue of the Jews. Oh my God, I'm sorry, y'all. This dog's over 100 pounds, so he's setting off the fucking uh, seatbelt alarm. I'm sorry, y'all. Um, says what? Uh, who, coming thither, went into the synagogue of the Jews. It says that these were more noble than those in Thessalonica and that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether these things were so right so search the scriptures daily to see if these things were true when you come across certain pieces of information y'all you have to research don't be blind so now something else that I found that was interesting if you brothers and sisters some of you that have been around for a, member, uh, for a minute if you remember under the trade center what happened Right here, right under the wreckage of the World Trade Center, they found a, a, a old ship, y'all. And you know, certain people were speculating this, certain people were speculating that, and I've done a video about it. But come to find out, it was an old slave ship under the World Trade Center after, you know, it went down. And he saw still, they don't like to be honest about it, but certain people were able to put together the pieces. All right, so this was, a, this was an old ship that was found under there. So what we're gonna do, actually, we gotta click on a couple, uh, where was that one? Where's the Daily Mail one that I saw? Daily Mail, right? It says, Scientists solved the mystery of the shipwreck found under the World Trade Center. Analysis of tree rings. It says, uh, Find ships was... Uh, Fine's ship was built in 1773 in Philadelphia. Um, so they find an old ship under there. Now, here in this article... They don't tell the truth about it that it was a most likely a former slave ship due to its construction and the couple of the things that it had on it in particular that indicate it was a slave ship they don't they're not honest about it here in daily mail but we come over here to the first article history news Net network all right this is why this is this is cross-referencing you have some certain things wiki wiki ain't gonna tell the truth on so certain things online you gotta you know dig around for all right, so was the newly discovered NYC ship used to transport slaves? Um, it says people are willing to rewrite the story of the of the Wall Street World Trade Center area in New York without knowing its history from a few centuries or even a few decades ago. But historical facts remind us where we've been. Okay, so this is actually a lot. I'm not gonna read through all of it, but I'm gonna get the important points. Uh, I'm gonna jump down says what the remains of a 32 foot section of a wooden ship is estimated to be about third to half of the whole so this is a big boy it says was discovered at the base of the World Trade Center site in New York Archeo archaeologists and scientists are collecting testing and dating the wood of the ship's hull All right um, it says they estimate that it dates back to the 18th uh, century Jumping down. Look, homie, I got the AC blown for you, homie. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, one part right here says what? Well, it says it was placed in the site as part as part of the landfill expanded the Lower Manhattan neighborhood in the late 1700s. So apparently, it was placed there, you know, to rot a part of the landfill. Then obviously, you know, Esau did what he did best, you know, build over it, try to hide the information. 
Um, man, 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 Esau. Well, you got a lot to pay for. Uh, let's go right here. So they know that it's not a commercial ship, meaning just, you know, regular trade goods because of a couple things that was on it. It says what uh, archaeologists and scientists say the ship was used in some sort of commerce, but what they have not said is for which commercial trade, right? What kind of commerce? It says uh, because of the size of the metal arc, one archaeologist rules out that it was used to melt blubber on a whaling ship because a whaling ship's oven would have been larger, suggesting instead the metal arc and bricks are a remnant from an ordinary cooking platform and a galley right so this wasn't used to melt you know well fat this was used for something else due to its design um let me go jump further down so I can, and this is a lot of reading I'm, I'm trying to get through it otherwise we'll be here for a hot little minute it's just describing some of the damage on the ship you can see some of the areas that it sailed through uh, and the, the damage that the ship occurs or has basically, it lines up with ships that were slave ships due to certain of the, you know, dents and holes in it and the decay. Um, let's come further down. Okay, right here. So we'll start right here. Go down, right? It says, but as a New York resident, who traced my ancestors, including researching the ships that transported them from Ghana, West Africa, uh, to the Jamaican colony and the Caribbean to the 13 northern colonies, especially South Carolina, Virginia, and New York. These historical remains are very familiar to me. Right, so this guy in particular, he specializes in observing them. It says, uh, though what I found in my research was shocking, I learned to embrace the history. I saw images of cooking cauldrons and gun ports on the ships that carried American ancestors on ships such as the Henrietta Marie, an 80-foot, 120-ton slave ship raised in Florida. It says they discovered a one and a half foot, uh, 16 and a half gallon cooking cauldron for the crew and a three foot, 85 gallon cooking cauldron that was used for slave passengers, for the slave passengers it carried, right? So a common theme on slave ships, y'all, was gun ports. Obviously, it's in case they needed to whoops, you know, shoot some shit out about the water. Uh, then big cooking cauldrons to feed the crew and the slaves. Come on now. So it was a, the guy is in a roundabout way. He's saying that this was a slave ship due to the pieces of evidence uh, that was on it. Um, he starts talking about DNA, how, you know, they look at some of the DNA, uh, and it shows that, uh, you know, there's, you know, dead, uh, so-called black people, uh, DNA on it. Um, let me double check. All right, and this is a little some sum I found off of Reddit. You know, Reddit ain't always the most accurate place, but this was a link that was referenced when I was going through articles. It says, during the cleanup of the following uh, during the cleanup following the collapse of the World Trade Center, crews uncovered a shipwreck positioned seven feet below the foundation. Wow. The ship came from Philadelphia circa 1773. All right, you scroll down. You know, people, you know, Esau Edom, he loves to just talk shit, right? Uh, it says, uh, uh, what? People, or some people are actually having a serious conversation. It says they also found a lot of dead slaves from the same time period. Apparently, this part of New York, of the New York Harbor was used to dispose of dead African slaves and ships. All right. So it's known that this part of the city, that part of New York was for, you know, ships and slaves. And somebody put a comment up. Apparently his account got deleted. He says, or perhaps sunken slave ship, not being sassy. I'm genuinely intrigued. So one guy is throwing out the suggestion, well, maybe it was just a sunken No do respond it says no DNA evidence was used to provide context uh, construction workers thought there were more bodies from the 9-11 T attacks they were actually a mass grave for dead slaves disposed of after dying during the transatlantic voyage look it up 
the photo only tells part of the story wow so right there y'all straight up look it up so here it is y'all man man this is how everything one way or another always revolves back to the truth here it is they were looking up i mean these rescuers they're you know digging up bodies thinking it's people who died in that event right and they're like well hey wait a minute <laughs> these bodies kind of oh player these were these were our dead ancestors y'all was there way before that that daggone tire went down so taking it back to this stop the foolishness man stop the foolishness just because we are oppressed here together doesn't mean that the negroes are native to the americas uh, stop it i'm gonna end on this one in galatians um this one is just you know a gut check man history check stop stop with stop that jake galatians 1 and 8 but though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you let him be accursed all right and hey, other scriptures was that continued in the things you've been assured of right that's the that's the basics even in the world that should be the basics the facts that we came over here on ships after they got done busting northern kingdom's head out they came in and you know wanted to bust our heads in and out and that's that's the end all be all we didn't we're not native to the americas we didn't spawn over here all right we come from the east as do all humans and through a course of events made our way to the different continents one way or another all right so that's about it we give all praises to yahweh bahashem yahweh shai bahashem rakakurash to honors to the elders and apostles of great millstone Peace, blessings, and salutations to all the like Akim Wa Akwa, learning and teaching the truth and sincerity. Shalom.